Here is another example of solving trig equations uh, without a calculator. Um, I told people in class that um, I am well aware that the TI, or excuse me, that the Casio has your equation solver, um, but it often will um, leave out values or it will um, not give you a precise answer. So I'm just, you can use it to check, but you're not going to have one for your test anyway. So, um, so don't get in the habit of, of relying on the calculator. Okay, so we see this problem. It says cosine x plus 1 equals sine of x. Um, and I know that I can have, I have a way to relate sine and cosine if they're squared. Um, so you remember, I like to, to call it the big daddy, that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if I can somehow get, introduce some squares, then maybe we can, um, can get somewhere with this one. Um, I would encourage you, and, and we'll, we'll do this as we go through the problem, but when you square both sides of the, of the equation, um, you have to check to make sure that you don't have any extra solutions, extraneous solutions, or I never can say that word right. Okay, so I'm squaring both sides, and I get cosine squared plus 2 cosine plus 1 is equal to sine squared. I'm well aware that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine. not cosine, but cosine squared, what I wrote. Um, and I decided to change sine into terms of, in terms of cosine rather than cosine in terms of sine because I had this term right here that was just cosine to the first power. Um, if I had tried to go in the direction of sine, then I'd have, a, I'd have to square things again and life would just get complicated, so it's not worth that. Um, notice the ones cancel out, and when I move the cosine squared to the other side, I get 2 cosine squared plus 2 cosine um, is equal to zero. I can factor out. Okay, then I know that cosine of x is either equal to zero or it's equal to negative one. It's equal to zero at um, pi over two and three pi over two. Um, oh, I didn't tell you how, in what world we're answering these questions, but um, that's okay. either way. Okay, cosine is negative 1 at pi. And what I need to do, so if they said, if they, this would be the answer, well, it wouldn't actually, but if they had said from 0 to 2 pi, that's what I could do. If they had said find all, then I would need pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. I would need 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Um, and I would need pi plus 2 pi k. But we're not finished, and we need to check to make sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our original problem and check each of the solutions. Um, so I first found that x was equal to pi over 2. When I plug in pi over 2, um, in thinking unit circle, cosine of pi over 2 up here, uh, we didn't move left to right, that's 0. Uh, plus 1 is equal to sine, right here is positive 1, that works. Uh, when I plug in x equals 3 pi over 2, the cosine of 3 pi over 2, that's down here. Um, and the cosine is still 0 plus 1, but the sine value is now negative 1. This is a false statement. So we have to eliminate that, um, that answer or that family of answers. So coming back here, we're going to eliminate um, anywhere we had 3 pi over 2. Um, so then I can check the last one, x equals pi. So cosine, that's over here. Cosine is negative 1 plus 1 equals sine at pi is 0, and that is a true statement. So depending on how they ask you to answer this question, if they had said find all, you would have said x equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Obviously k is an element of the integers, so we like to say kes. Um, or, and then we'd have had x equals pi plus 2 pi k. So that's how we would answer the question when they say find all. If they say on the interval, uh, often we'll see 0 to 2 pi. We might see something else, but that, that's good enough for our purposes now. x equals pi over 2 or x equals pi.